Have you ever wanted to build your very own personalized key to the internet? You know, a key that could maybe give you a little more privacy, a faster connection, or just a way around some of those frustrating restrictions. Well, today, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're building a custom configuration file for an incredibly powerful tool called HTTP Injector. So how do we even begin to think about this? Well, let's not just see this as, you know, how to use an app. Let's frame it as a mission. The real question is, how do you build a custom key to the internet? This is all about understanding the pieces and putting them together yourself to really take back control. So your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to craft a totally personalized configuration file right from scratch, one that's built specifically for your needs. And our main tool for this job is an app that puts a surprising amount of power right in your hands. And the tool we're talking about, it's called HTTP Injector. Now, I want you to think of it less like a simple app and more like a professional toolkit. Seriously, it gives you all the individual pieces you need to assemble your own unique key for getting online securely and completely on your own terms. Okay, let's dive right in. Every great mission starts with picking the right gear, right? For us, that means choosing the kind of key we actually want to build. In the tech world, they call this the tunnel type. So what even is a tunnel type? Don't let the technical name scare you off. It's really just the method the app is gonna to use to make that secure connection. Is it gonna be like an old school skeleton key or more like a modern high-tech key card? That's basically the choice you're making right here. And believe me, you've got a few options here. V2 Ray, Hysteria, Shadow Socks, but the big one, the most popular and trusted standard is SSH. And for today, that's what we're gonna focus on. So yeah, for our mission today, we're gonna to stick with that tried and true path. It just, it helps guarantee success. We're choosing the SSH tunnel type and we're gonna pair it with what's called a direct connection. This combo is super reliable and honestly, it's the perfect foundation for our custom key. All right, we've got our tools. Now comes the really intricate part of the job, crafting the payload. This is where we get into the nitty gritty details that are gonna make our key truly one of a kind. So payload, what in the world is that? Well, it's actually pretty simple. Think of it like this. It's the set of instructions that your key is carrying. It's what tells the lock, in this case, the server, exactly how to open. It is literally the unique pattern of teeth and ridges being cut into our digital key. Okay, so once you're inside the app's payload generator, there are two really important settings we gotta start with. First, we set the payload type to direct, which matches the choice we made earlier. Easy enough. Second, we set the request method to get. All this does is tell the server we want to request data, which is exactly what we need. Okay, we've got the foundation laid, but now, now we're getting to the heart of it. You're going to want to pay close attention here, because these next three options, they're kind of the secret sauce for creating a super stable and reliable connection. And what's so cool here is how these three things work together, like a team. Online host is your first line of defense. If the connection hiccups, it immediately tries to get you back online. Keep alive is the backup plan. It works hard to maintain that connection, even if the server itself is having a bad day. And finally, user agent simply tells the server what kind of device you're using, which completes that digital handshake. All right, our key is perfectly crafted. It has the right model, the right pattern, but here's the thing. A key is totally useless if you don't have a door to unlock, right? So our next step is to find that door, which in our world is an SSH server. And this is where you have a choice to make, a fork in the road, really. On one hand, you can find your own server details, the host, port, username, all that stuff, and pop them in manually. This is the way to go for the absolute best performance. On the other hand, you can use one of the ready-made servers that are already built into the app. It's definitely more convenient, but your speed might take a hit depending on how busy that server is. And hey, if you do go the ready-made route, here's a little pro tip for you. Keep an eye on latency. Latency is just a fancy word for lag. The higher that number, the slower your connection feels. You want to find a server with really low latency, and the app makes it super easy. Just look for the ones with that nice green status indicator. Green is good. Okay, this is the moment. All the pieces are in place. The key has been perfectly crafted. We've selected our door. All that's left is to put the key in the lock and turn it. We've double-checked everything. The payload is good to go. The server's picked. It's time. Let's hit that start button and see this thing fly. Okay, now, you might see this pop up in the log. Premature connection close. First reaction, panic, right? But don't. This is totally normal. 
First attempts don't always work out, but remember those special settings we turned on? They're about to do their thing. And just like that, see? Without you touching a thing, the app is trying again. That's our online host setting from earlier, working its magic, just refusing to give up after one little hiccup. And there it is. SSL Handshake was successful. Yes, that is exactly what we wanted to see. The key fit, the lock turned, and the door is wide open. Mission accomplished. So, just take a second and think about what we just did. You didn't just, you know, tap a button on an app. You actually built something. You selected the tools, you crafted the payload, you chose the server, and you understood the whole process. You successfully built a custom digital key from the ground up. And that really leaves us with one final thought. This wasn't just about learning some techie steps. It was about empowerment. Now that you know how to build the key, the only real question left is this. What doors will you choose to unlock?